With COVID-19 vaccine inequality a major talking point in 2021 and Africa lagging behind developed regions of the world in accessing the life-saving immunizations, a strong case has emerged for countries like South Africa and others on the continent to shore up their own vaccine development and manufacturing capacity in order to put Africa on a path to greater self-determination. But as we discovered on a recent visit to Ayabi's Vaccine Design and Development Laboratory, it's something that won't come cheap or fast. To build a new vaccine manufacturing facility and have it validated for production takes at least two to three years at a minimum and can cost, you know, $500 million or, or more and involve all kinds of, you know, just like the vaccines are subject to regulatory and quality control assessments, those facilities are subject to regulatory and quality control issues, both in their design and in how they run every day. And that, you know, is something that, you know, is a process that, that takes time and effort and resources. And, you know, right now, you know, the people who would be able to, you know, facilitate that technology transfer are doing everything they can to scale up <laughs> manufacturing. So it's not like there are a lot of people who are freely available to help work on, you know, technology transfer kinds of activities. So we view it as a longer term prospect that you build the local capacity. These are complex diseases, so they require complex means of being able to access data from... Ayavi established its vaccine design and development lab in 2008 to facilitate the design and development of viral vector vaccines, using the vesicular stomatitis virus as a vector to develop vaccine candidates for HIV and emerging infectious diseases such as Lassa fever, Marburg virus diseases, Sudan Ebola virus, and COVID-19. What does it take to ensure the highest quality standards for vaccine manufacturing? It is an enormous effort that takes lots of people's dedicated focus inside of companies as well as tremendous expertise and close attention on the part of regulatory authorities, whether it's you know the FDA in the US or SAFRA in South Africa. So there's both the private sector, the vaccine manufacturer's responsibility to ensure quality. And then there's the need for really expert regulatory oversight that is watching those programs like a hawk and know exactly what to look for. Because you're talking about for vaccines, it's not like a therapeutic where you give it to someone who's ill. For a vaccine, you're giving it to someone who's healthy to protect them from getting sick. So the quality requirements are exceptionally high. Ayabi says that as with COVID-19, a local outbreak one day can swiftly become a lethal pandemic the next. And while COVID-19 vaccines have become the urgent priority, the rising number of hemorrhagic fever outbreaks, particularly in parts of Africa, underscores the need to prioritize pandemic preparedness, vaccine development and testing. When you have a major infectious disease threat, it really shines a light on inequities that exist not only in individual countries, but across countries. And um, it is, you know, a true tragedy that vaccines that could be, you know, saving people's lives are not globally accessible right now. And as was, you know, pointed out, the time frame for when people all around the world will be able to benefit from uh, vaccines for COVID um, is unfortunately much further out in the future than um, we would like. And, and I think it is still unpredictable. And while we hope that progress will um, accelerate, there's you know, reason to be concerned that it may still be parts of the world that don't access the vaccines for a long time to come. And because of that, that has the public health consequences that impact the globe as well. You know, it is truly a situation where, you know, everyone's safety depends upon everyone around the world being vaccinated and getting access to the best available technologies because, you know, this disease is not going away. This virus is not going away. We asked Feinberg to weigh in on current efforts led by South Africa and India to waive intellectual property rights at the World Trade Organization. And while supporting the effort, he believes it doesn't necessarily mean things will move faster. 
having you know, worked in vaccine development and having seen what it takes to manufacture and globally distribute a vaccine, it is, it is very um, complicated. And I think, again, going back to my earlier point, what's important is the outcome that people get the vaccine. You know, if one thinks that the issue is intellectual property, I think that can focus your attention in ways that are not necessarily going to deliver that end result, because what's still needed is the scientific and technical expertise, the resources, the financing, the you know regulatory capabilities to make sure that the products being produced are of the highest quality. And if you think about how all of those things are going to come together, and is that going to give you the desired outcome sooner or later than what you really need? I mean, I believe that the fastest route to global access is making sure that the companies that are currently producing licensed or you know, emergency use authorized COVID vaccines do everything they can to make their products globally available and that the global community needs to come together and align about how to make that happen. And while the public sector has a leading role to play, the message here is clear that they cannot in and of themselves solve this issue alone and figuring out how different sectors and stakeholders work in the most efficient, strategic ways to get to the end result of design, development and manufacturing of vaccines is something that will demand a lot of focus and attention to detail from government, science academia to manufacturing know-how, logistics and regulatory oversight over a number of years. Sherman Bryceby's SABC News.